For 40 years, the small country of Slovakia was one of several Soviet-controlled nations held behind the Iron Curtain. At that time, Slovakia and the Czech Republic were united as one nation, called Czechoslovakia. In 1989, Czechoslovakia liberated itself from Soviet control. Virtually overnight, their communist nightmare had ended. But after independence, people struggled through the tumultuous years that followed. People like Olga Ruberakova and her children. The past regime, the communist regime, was very harsh for people living in this system. Especially for free and open-minded people. There weren't any opportunities for me, because as soon as you would stand out of the crowd a little bit, they were trying to put you down immediately. We weren't able to travel abroad freely. There was no freedom of speech, very limited opportunities. It was a true dictatorship. Olga Ruberakova lived the greater part of her life under communism. Throughout those brutal years, she struggled to provide for her two small children, Katarina and Eric. For a child uh, living in a Soviet Union, it was different because you didn't see all the politics, you know, of course you didn't care as a child, but if you grow thinking about all this more and more, uh, it was really not comfortable and you know, the control was very, very tough. I know some stuff because uh, my mom was talking about it a lot. I didn't have the option to do what I wanted to do. So this is the, th the thing that I cannot imagine. People who have not experienced living in such a system can't imagine what it was like. From the collapse of communism through the uncertain years that followed, Eric and Katarina would grow up. As democracy was regained, Czechoslovakia experienced a brief period of celebration. But the economy had been devastated. Political corruption was widespread and unemployment was soaring. Slowly, the Czech region began to stabilize, but the Slovak region lagged farther behind. Then, in 1993, the two regions split into the Slovak Republic and the Czech Republic. Slovakia was now truly on her own. The communist leadership was blaming the imperialists, United States, capitalists, uh, all kinds of, you know, enemies that were cause of the failures of the communist system. There was finally no one to blame for our own mistakes. We were learning the lessons from these mistakes and we were also preparing the strategies how to be a more successful country. Ten years after democracy and freedom came to Slovakia, the country was still struggling. In 2001, unemployment was nearly 20%, the highest in all of Europe. The new nation had hit an economic wall. There were many situations when I would tell my kids it would be better because I had the feeling they are very capable people, they are fighters. But I was also telling them that maybe it would be better for them to leave the country. Even if we now lived in a free country, democratic country, there were many things I didn't like here. Well, it wasn't easy. It was really so bad, so I think that they, we should talk about it more. I have really bad feeling, and this is still inside in us because of what happened. Still, that we feel the freedom, but we are afraid of what happened uh, in the past. And this is really, really difficult. The Slovakian people made a dramatic change in direction. They voted for sweeping open market reforms, including a flat tax of 19% more flexible labor regulations, and privatization of their pension system. These changes were difficult, but within five years, business owners had newfound access to financing. The black market shrank, and foreign investment came into the country. Slovakia's unemployment dropped to 7.5%, and its standard of living increased dramatically. Economy started to perform, Slovakia made a transformation from the country that was lagging behind the neighbors, Czech Republic, Hungary, Poland, and that 
adopted two waves of serious economic reforms. These reforms put us ahead of the countries where we lagged behind in the 90s. That was our way how we catched up with the more developed countries. Slovakia had finally made the transformation from an Iron Curtain state to a thriving European nation. And starting one's own business also became a real possibility. Katarina Rybarikova had an idea. She would bring the growing Paul Frank brand with its distinctive monkey logo from America to Eastern Europe. It was almost six years ago. We didn't know uh, Paul Frank people, so I found some address online. I uh, googled a lot of stuff about Slovakia and um, all information they would be interested in. Okay, let's do a small presentation and we will see how it goes. Maybe they will be interested in Slovakia. So we flew to, to LA. Uh, we met uh, with owners and that's how we started. Now we are the only uh, official Paul Frank store in Europe. It was really so easy. Katarina has hired her brother, Eric, to manage product research in a growing business. Their mother, Olga, is the bookkeeper. Katarina is a fascinating person. And I'm not saying that just because she's my daughter. I'm very proud of her and Eric, of what they've achieved. And I'm happy to be a part of such a company. This is a family business. Uh, always we discuss about, you know, what could be the best. We have opinion also from our mom, which, you know, is different generation. That means you get different point of view on the product and we decide, you know, which one is the best and we go for it. The feeling is, is very good because you do it as a family together. What I feel now, it's definitely hard. It is difficult, but every job is difficult. Nothing is easy but the feeling on the end of the day is definitely the best. We're definitely growing, I would say 30, 40% up. Even if the market is shaky in Europe, I mean, we had so many problems with situation in Europe Union, but uh, it's still growing, so it's a good thing. In the communist regime, when my kids were small, I'd have never thought they could possibly achieve something like this. We have gone through three very fundamental transformation. One was the economic transformation from centrally planned economy to what I would call the market economy. Then there was this political transformation from a totalitarian state to the democracy including building the independent Slovakia. The most important transformation of all, which is the transformation from paternalism to individual responsibility. State paternalism has not only the ugly face of the communist rule, but it has a sort of very nice face of the social welfare state of the Western style. If you take responsibility from the individual citizens and companies to the state, then you end up in another version of socialism, which we proved that it is clearly unsustainable way of organizing the society. Now, you know, the monkey name is Julius. It wasn't famous in Slovakia at all. And now I can say, you know, people recognize Paul Frank, which the feeling is really good. Despite the fact that it can be hard even nowadays, the world problems, the European problems, I dare say that there is nothing better than democratic society and freedom. I'm happy that I live now and I didn't live before. <laughs>